Panama City from the 66th floor at Panavera at the JW Marriott. I'm at a uh, farmer's market, uh, not too far away from uh, the hotel, had lunch, my rice and fried chickens, and now just checking out this farmer's market, selling lots of fruits and fresh meats. Cato de Mariscos, featured on The Amazing Race, season... 19 I want to say but I could be wrong uh, yeah so amazing race was here where they had to do a challenge uh, with some shoes and I forgot what the other uh, the other detour was but yeah so amazing race right here you know I'm a fan of it let's go check it out Wow, look at all the fish vendors in here um, yeah smells like fish that's for sure a lot of shrimp too see? Camarones. down there uh, yeah but up here there's a little restaurant uh, I already had lunch but I bet you they sell a lot of fresh fish right here at this restaurant So this area is uh, the Salsa Pudis Market. It was featured on The Amazing Race. And it's also uh, part of Chinatown. There's actually a sign over there, probably too hard to see, but it says, Benvenidos a Barro Chino. Chinatown, this is where it's at. Um, yeah, little shops, little vendors, selling all sorts of trinkets. If you need guitars, here's the place to come. A lot of musical instruments just strung up on the ceiling. I assume these workers are installing more of these small vending bays along this uh, intersecting street uh, where the other existing vendors are, so they look like that. There will be more vendors here.
behind me is a model of what uh, Panama Viejo would have looked like back in the 17th century before it was invaded and conquered and buildings were destroyed. So, otherwise it was a pretty neat town back in the 17th century. Um, Panama City was founded in 1519 and uh, after this, this city was destroyed it was moved over to the uh, Casco Antigua or the Old Quarter and established there and then eventually it expanded out but this uh, site has been preserved as a national historic site. So it's interesting in Spanish history that the English are depicted as pirates from what I know, uh, or from what I've always read or watched on TV, it seems like the Spaniards were always the pirates, but in this case it depends on who you see as the good guys or bad guys. And since the English were invading Spanish territory, yeah, it would only seem fitting. So, as you can see, the English defeated the uh, Spaniards here, and took over the land. And yeah, so the pirates took control of the city and destroyed most of it. I found myself a nickel pincher, so here we go. So we are here at Panama Viejo, and this uh, tower here is one of the last remaining structures after the invasion of the English pirate Sir Henry Morgan in 1673. Um, the English, they came here, they pillaged, they ransacked, they put everything on fire. Um, fortunately, this tower is what still stands and now protected as a National Historic Site. So this is the original location of uh, the settlement for Panama City back in 1519. And uh, as it grew, English wanted dominance over this area as it was an important uh, trading route, right? So it connected the uh, Atlantic to the Pacific and if you're European and want to go to Asia, that probably was the shortest route to go uh, across the seas as such. And so it was very important with the trade to have control over this area. And yeah, unfortunately history, you know, a lot of things were destroyed because of that. These steps are very old, you can tell, but uh, that's part of history. Oh cool, looks like they're going to put on some sort of a uh, stage so here, they've got tables set up, maybe it's a wedding or some sort of party. Uh, I guess it makes sense to rent out this place for extra revenue. Um, yeah, I guess to Panamanians this special. This place holds a special place in their hearts, right? So very special to hold an event here for sure. Okay, so, made it to the top. Oh. Let me catch my breath here. So now we are at the top of the tower, the bell tower to be precise. Uh, this is what remains of the cathedral. And down there is would have been the, the great hall or seating area for the cathedral. And the bell probably would have been right up there, strung and hanging. Since we're so high up, visibility, uh, you can see from long distances, so uh, strategic point, you can see invaders from all the way around 360 degrees, but unfortunately uh, they were invaded, they did not have time to prepare, and over there is where uh, all the Panama towers and hotels and condos, all that stuff is. 
I think this here was the original spiral staircase. The priest would have to go up the steps and up the way to the clock tower. I don't know how safe it is now, but looks like it's still open. So the ruins behind me are what's left of Casa Obisado, Obispado, yeah, something like that. Anyways, uh, yeah, then the uh, the church, the cathedral was right there and just behind it. But if you can imagine all the history that was here, dating back to 1519, 17th century, just amazing stuff. Lots of tourists come here, check it out, learn about the history of Panama. Highly recommended. So I walked over to this area, found this uh, very cool looking tree. Anyways, this tree, if it was one of the original, uh, definitely centuries years old. I thought it was really cool, never seen anything like this before. Uh, branches are very uh, big as you can see, but still strong to the point where it's not hanging too much. Look at that, that is so cool. Here's the location of some of the old wells. Piggy toe, little, little piggy. So here I am at the uh, backside of the JW Marriott Hotel, also uh, the Ocean Sun Casino. That's on the second level here. Um, yeah, look at these views, just great. Look at this. So I think this used to be the uh, former Trump Towers here in Panama City. And now it's renamed to JW Marriott. And the reason why I'm here is I read a travel blogger that said you could go all the way up to the 66th floor and there's an observation deck and you get a, uh, a view of uh, Panama City from there. It's called the uh, Panavera, according to the travel blogger. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Got a little bit higher up, we found an elevator, um, but I don't think this is the 66th floor. I'm just gonna walk around, see what I can find before someone kicks me out. Okay, not too bad of you, so this is what I'm seeing from, uh, I think we're about 20 stories up. Yeah, just look at these towers, eh? Hey, I landed on the Sky Lobby and right now there's a whole bunch of fancy people dressed in white. I'm guessing it was a wedding or something that happened here. And here I am with me and my tank top. I just felt out of place. See, there's the present, so I assume it's a wedding. Alright, so we made it to the 66th floor. This is Panavera. This is the view that you get. It's an infinity pool right here. I don't have my swim trunk, so I'm not going in, but look at that view. Crazy. Too bad the sun is causing a haze. Otherwise, uh, I've been told that it's really nice for sunsets here, 6.30. But I don't have that much time to wait for it, so um, I'm gonna check out our next destination. We're gonna go over to the uh, 
walk along the causeway along there it just loops around I was told it has nice views so we'll check it out over there so I'm just taking a stroll along the uh, Sinto Causeway, it's the one that wraps around and this is the start of it and there's literally hundreds of flags just flying out here. Um, trying to find the uh, Canadian one of course. Past the US and the uh, and Great Britain. And I see the, the proud Canadian flag here so I'm going to quickly get a uh, photo with it. There it is, the red maple leaf, true and proud. Let me get a photo. All right, so we'll continue our way. All right, we're at the uh, nearing the end of the flags. Uh, just got the name of it. It's called uh, Cinto Costera. Cinta Costera. So it goes up and around. See. Up and then around and then it goes all the way up there. So, so we'll see you on the other side. So the whole length of this is uh, 2.8 kilometers, which really should be a piece of cake for me, right? I mean, uh, Perla is five kilometers, so just a little past Lagoon Two is what it works out to. Which is, yeah, no problem considering we patrol uh, 10 kilometers every night. And I'm going at my own pace, and there's no obstacles to trip me over. It's all flat surface. I figure what this is uh, this uh, Cinta Costera is the uh, it's a bypass so that traffic doesn't have to cut through the center of town. And yeah, this would be a much faster way of getting around. So there we have it, finished my 2.8 kilometer walk, which is a piece of cake. Considering we walk 10 kilometers every night patrolling the beaches for turtles. So here's the end of the marker, as you can see, 2.8 kilometers. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, yeah, what can I say, it's, it goes around, it's a highway, it's busy, but there's uh, cyclists, there's people on rollerblades, there's people jogging. I've seen people go down to one end and then go all the way back. So realistically, if I walk this way, go back, and then come back again, that's nine kilometers. So that's about how much, uh, how, how long we walk every night. Um, you can see the uh, beautiful sunset as well. The stadium's lit up, so I'm guessing there's a football slash soccer game going on. Bridge of America is over there, it might be hard to see. I see some smoke, I think there's a big fire going on. I have no clue, but there's smoke in the distance. Uh, gonna call it a night, take an Uber, get back home, and let's do it again tomorrow. Okay, see you later. So here's the source of the fire. I'm not sure if these kids started it, but they're tossing plastic and stuff into the pit. Yeah, I'm not sure how safe that is. But uh, this is the neighborhood I'm in. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what to say, but there's people playing soccer, there's music playing. Looks like an okay neighborhood, eh? Laundry out on the windows. Hopefully these kids are safe.